Today I'm going to be reviewing the Buja V Yuma 100 Watt Thin Film Solar Panel. I usually don't show open box in my review because it's just silly. But in this case, very different. I need to show you this. This is the box that it came with. Check this out. It's rolled inside a very small box. 10 inches by 10 inches by 29 inches. Very small box for such a large solar panel. Let's open it up and check this out. This solar panel has a tendency to curve outward and it's not flat. So I have to tie it with my PVC pipes so that it stays straight and flat. And by the way, this panel is designed to roll, but it can only roll with the solar panel facing outwards. So you want to roll the panel like this, but not like that. But first, let's go over the dimensions. 43 inches long, 27 inches wide, and a whopping 0.94 millimeter thick. Yes, that's less than one millimeter thick. To show you how thin the solar panel is, this is my three quarter inch PVC pipe. And that is how thick the solar panel is. This panel weighs a whopping 3.3 pounds. Here's the specs on the solar panel. The voltage output on this solar panel is a little bit higher than a standard 12 volt solar panel. So if you have an older charge controller that cannot take higher voltage, this is something that you have to consider. But if you want to use this to charge your power station, then there shouldn't be any problem at all because most if not all power station has a wider range of input voltage. Let me demonstrate how this panel is being rolled up. There you go, just like that. Extremely flexible. Let me show you the close-up look of the solar cell. From here to here, that's one single cell. That's one cell, that's one cell, that's one cell. There are a total of 23 cells per row. There are two rows, so each panel has 46 cells. The open circuit voltage of the panel is 30 volts, so that's a little bit over half a volt per cell. 0.65 volt per cell to be exact, open circuit. It's got a very thin nickel strip zigzagging around the cells. How do I know it's nickel strip? I got my magnet here, check this out. Isn't that cool? Let me try it again. <laughs> Bourgeois V makes two models for this solar panel. One with the adhesive on the back and one with grommet holes and they call it drilled. And I prefer one with grommets like this because it's removable. With the adhesive, once you put it on, it's pretty hard to remove. But it's good for places where you don't want to drill holes, like on the roof of an RV. This thin film solar panel is called a CIGS solar panel. And that's because it's made of four elements, copper, indium, gallium, and selenide. Unlike the traditional silicon-based crystalline solar panel, which is made of up to 80% silicon, this thin film solar panel has no silicon. Silicon is glass, which shatters open impact. This can even be printed on a very thin piece of plastic and therefore is extremely flexible. The only downside to this panel is that the efficiency is only 17% compared to a monocrystalline solar panel which can be up to 22 to 25 percent because it's less efficient. Thin film solar panels are typically bigger in size compared to crystalline solar panels. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison between a typical silicon base glass monocrystalline solar panel and the thin film solar panel. Both of these output 100 watts but you can see the thin film solar panel is much larger in size compared to the monocrystalline panel on the left. I'm going to do an output test and compare the output between these two solar panels. 
I have my power station here ready to plug in. Right now it's the middle of November and the sun is low in the sky. It's around noon right now and you can see how long my shadow is. So I should expect full output from these solar panels. We'll see. First up is the monocrystalline solar panel and I've just plugged it in right now. Let's see what we got. And we are producing 63 watts. Now let's check on the shading effect on the panel. We've got a piece of wood blocking the corner of the solar panel. And we are producing only 6 watts. That's pretty pathetic. Next up is the thin film solar panel. And we are making a whopping 86 watts. Wow, what a surprise. I didn't expect it to produce that much power in the winter and much more than the monocrystalline solar panel. That's awesome. How about shading effect on this panel? Same shading as the monocrystalline. Let's see how much output we can make. 57 watts with that much shading. Wow, that is awesome. Check that out. 57 watts. Wow. Whereas the other panel only produces 6 watts. What a difference it makes. This thin film solar panel has 12 blocking diodes, and therefore it's more efficient when it's shaded. A typical monocrystalline class solar panel like this one here typically has about 2-4 to four blocking diodes only. So there you have it, thin film solar panel. It has more output than even monocrystalline and is more resistant to shading. Check this out. After just a few minutes, the output goes up to 76 watts. That's amazing. So with this much shading, we only lose about 10% on the thin film solar panel. Whereas on the monocrystalline solar panel, we lose almost 90%, almost down to zero. What a difference it makes. So there you have it. Bouja V Yuma 100 thin film 100 watt solar panel. So surprising that it has more output than my monocrystalline solar panel. Over 30% more output to be exact because this solar panel is so thin and light. My next project is to use this solar panel to make a roof for my electric bike. It provides shade for me and also charges my bike when I'm on the go. Until next time, thanks for watching. Isn't that cool? Let me try it again.